this video, I'm going to show you two different methods to work the magic loop and one non-magic loop method. I'm using a 10 millimeter hook and I'm using a number six super bulky weight yarn. This is Woolies Thick and Quick, but any yarn will do. And don't forget your water. So grab your yarn and what you're going to do is make sure to leave a long enough tail. So you're going to take the tail end and you can kind of hook that around your pinky just to keep it more stable. And then you'll take the working yarn and wrap it around and under and you'll form an X underneath your hand, just like this. You'll turn your hand. I'm also holding my working tail with my thumb. And then you're gonna insert your hook underneath that and hook that yarn, this might take a couple tries, through your work. And then you're gonna twist. And here you have the formation of your magic loop. So I'm just taking my hand out. And now with the working yarn, which is the yarn attached to your skein, you're going to yarn over and pull through. So a chain one. And this counts as your first chain. And now you can continue chaining to whatever is recommended in whatever pattern you're following. So for a double crochet, you usually chain two or three. And when you want to reduce the circle, you pull on your tail and you'll see it shrink down like this. As you work into it, it's really normal that it extends and gets larger. So don't be alarmed if you notice that happening. If it does, all you have to do is pull on this tail. To work into it, all you have to do is insert into the center of that ring and work whatever stitch is specified in whatever pattern you're working. To keep it a little bit more stable in your hands, I like to pinch it with my thumb and index finger, as you can see here. At this point, you should start to see your magic loop extend. This is normal while working into it. I usually don't pull the tail tight until I've completed the second round. So now I'm gonna show you the second method of the magic loop. This is my current favorite method to do, but it has a couple pitfalls that you should be aware about. With the tail to your left and you're working yarn to the right, you're going to grab the right and fold it over so it's on top of the tail. And then you're gonna take the tail and you're gonna go from front to back, inserting it into the center and pulling that through. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you actually technically have to do to form the magic loop. So now we're going to mimic that chain one that we did in the first version. So we'll insert our hook from front to back, yarn over, and pull through. But because we didn't twist it like we did in the first version, this technically won't count as your first stitch. And the reason for that is because I find it often shrinks down and gets completely hidden when you work in the loop. So now I'll yarn over and pull through, which this I count as my first chain one when you're doing this method. You also see I have a kind of extra loops around the ring, I actually take this tail out. And sometimes I find if you're working in the center and you catch these tails, it can kind of impede the process of shrinking it down. So sometimes I'll even pull out the second one once I'm done. And like, it's gonna be fine in the end. You're gonna seam your tail in anyways. And so now you just work into that center ring. In this case, I'm doing single crochets just as an example. And so you work however many single crochets or half double or whatever the heck your pattern states until the number. And you can see again, my ring kind of extended and I find my ring extends more when I use this method than it does with the other method. But it's not a big deal because you're gonna shrink it in anyways. It took me a while to figure out this method. I really couldn't grasp the first one that well. So the second version I really love, but uh, it's got a couple pitfalls to keep in mind when working that method. So now I'm gonna show you how to work another method, but this does not have the magic loop. So what you're gonna do is with a slip knot on your hook, you're gonna pull that closed, and then you're gonna chain four. Technically you don't have to chain four, you could chain six, you could chain seven, it, does, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, the only time this matters is the size of your ring, but four seems to be a pretty good standard for a small ring. So what you're gonna do is find that first chain, and then you insert, yarn over, pull through, and keep pulling through. This is called a slip stitch. So you can kind of see in this beginning that we have this ring, but you can't really see the center well. So you can poke your finger through from back to front, front to back, whatever you're comfortable with to try and extend this so you can see it. But this is where you'll be working. Rather than working into the top of these chains, you're gonna work directly into the middle. The only pitfall of doing this is you're not actually technically going to be able to shrink down your ring. So you will see it extend a bit as you work into here. The only way to actually shrink this in is by using your tail. 
So what you would do with a tapestry needle, you would thread your needle and then take that and weave it around the ring that you form and pulling that close. And that will help shrink it down, but it won't always be perfect. And keep in mind that some fibers are more sensitive to tugging, like really uh, soft Pima cottons. I've actually had them completely break on me by pulling them too tight. I hope you found these methods useful and that you were able to level up your crochet game. Keep in mind with crochet, a lot of things are freeform and there's not always one way to do something. So just look for what methods feel the most comfortable for you and just keep trying them out over time.